Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, good evening, wherever you might be. It is Monday, June 21st, 10 a.m. California time. So I hope you all had a great weekend, Father's Day. We had a very um, busy weekend. We had our grandies here Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then we went over to Adair and Jerry's um, when they got back. They were on a um, holiday for Jerry's 40th birthday. I think I shared this Friday. And we survived. It was a lot of fun. It was hotter than the hinges of so hot. Now, I know it doesn't compare with Mary Kay's hot that is in Arizona, but it was like 106 and it's just stifling. So the good news is that the neighbors were gone and I, I called them. I might have shared this Friday. And I said, look, this is going to come across rude no matter how you slice it, but um, are you going to be gone? <laughs> Can we use your pool? <laughs> and the answer was yes. And boy, did they have a ball. We would have been sunk without that pool because it was too hot to go outside. And these are little kids, right? The only casualty to report is we're missing a remote control. <laughs> so I'm hoping today, as things get pulled together, that the small one will show up. It's the one for Netflix, you know, the little one. So we asked Adair to look through this kid's stuff because they packed themselves up. They were so good. I mean, I don't, if you've got, ever had grandkids come and stay for 24 hours, you know what I'm talking about, right? And um, I said, pack your stuff up. And they did. They really, really did. I was really proud of them. Got it all pulled together. And um, they're home now, safe and sound. Except, where's my remote? Okay. <laughs> so the other thing is that tomorrow, I believe that my new units will be installed. The, Bill Deering is doing the cabinetry for me, and he had a little fight with the first round of Formica that was going to be on the top of the back counter over there. So hopefully we can get some in, because this is really halfway seriously important, because on Wednesday, Lilo is flying here from Texas, and she and Robin are coming over, and we are, they're going to help me get organized. I even, people, I even bought a P-Touch labeler. <laughs> I even did that. <laughs> Normally, it's just like shove it in the closet and shut the doors. And, and the worst part is I have the feeling that the more organized I get, the more I'm not going to be able to find my stuff, like my remote control. Hopefully, John will get that. So I see people are coming in. That's just great. I wanted to say to you, Misty, um, thank you for your address, your card, your $100 rebate from Bernina is in the mail. And what the deal is, is if you purchase a Bernina based on me influencing you to get it, pushing it just a little bit, uh, I can send you this $100 card and you got a month to get it in. And it's funny because Misty got an L850 and now she's thinking about a 590 and I said, I'll send you another one. But though I am being your influencer, you guys are being my influencer because I am seriously looking at the 500 series and I shared that the other day and the fact I keep talking about it maybe maybe John will say what should I get you for x and that's what I'm going to get but I just love it because it just parallels the 700 series that we'll be working on today and so I want to tell you right now grab a pencil and I'll tap dance for a few minutes moment a few moments more grab a paper grab a um, a pencil because you're going to want to take notes. And what I'm going to be sharing today is finished applique the Shelley Tobish way. And if you don't know who Shelley Tobish is, I would um, suggest that you, you know, I thought I put it in here. She's been on a show with us, both she and her husband, um, Bernie, and she is a master at getting things like a Sally Collins master of getting everything right. And honestly, I did think 
thought that I put in here, her book cover, she has a, a precision piecing book that along with her products that they sell, Acorn, we carry them too because we love them so much. She just steps everything up a notch. And what I'm going to show you is how she does finish applique, which is different than mine. All right. Um, I like hers a lot, but I would start with mine and then try hers. And again, we'll be doing it on a Bernina. I don't know how to tell you how to do this on other machines. I'm not even sure it's possible. I'm sure it is, but I'm not even sure. Okay. So while you're grabbing your pencil and paper, one of the things I did with the kids is we went back over to Robin's, who's going to be here helping me get organized because she is the bird maven. Well, Lennox now could hold two birds. Her brother had one, but it kept escaping. So we got him. And look at that. I mean, it's just amazing. And one of her, some of her finches now are inside and some are outside. And one of her rules is that you have to kiss it on the forehead before you put it back in the cage in the house. And it's a nice cage. And um, the reason she really tries to domesticate these birds is because when they're outside in the aviary, she wants to be able to get in there with them and not completely freak them out. But the other thing that Robin had are two chickens because she has older chickens that have stopped producing. And so I had a chicken on my shoulder. <laughs> Robin has hair that's kind of like mine. It's a little fluffier. And then when the chicken would go on her um, shoulder, it would nestle into her hair. And I asked if they're boys or girls because, of course, they want girls because girls are special. Uh, no, they want the eggs. And I said, well, how do you know what you got? And she said, we won't know until one might turn into a rooster. And I said, well, they live in a residential area. So I'm like, what the heck are you going to do? And she said, well, get it to a farm or something like that. Uh, we had... We have animals behind the house, and we had roosters there. It didn't bother me at all, but they drove the neighbors crazy. But that's probably because I get up first thing in the morning. So, um, wait, is this Robin? What's this one? Oh, so, okay, I'm not sure if I showed this on Friday or not, but Lennox loved it because she loves cats so much. And she said, make sure you get them all. Make sure you get them all. So isn't that um, a fabulous use of uh, fabric? And I just noticed now um, that some of the spools are just solid kitty fabric. So very, very cute, Robin. Thank you. This is a different Robin, by the way. And then Rondi uh, uh, sent me an email, and this is hers. And um, she had told me originally that she was going to do fused applique, and she asked, how did I feel it would work with the spools? And I said, I don't know. So I tried to get hold of her this morning. Ronnie, I know you're on here a lot of the times. You, I don't know if you're on right now or not. I would like to know if you did do fused applique on the um, on the, spin, the spinning, you know, the windmills or whatever you want to call them, the blades, and how that worked out for you. Because it sure looks like you nailed those corners and everything. Isn't that pretty? And that looks like it's a nice navy blue background. I mean, it's completely opposite of mine, but it just goes to show. The other thing is, y'all, I'll note she didn't put dots on it, and it looks great. Absolutely great. But what she did do was at the end of each um, spine or whatever, she would finish it with a beautiful leaf. So that kind of helps point it out a little bit. Okay, then this is Jan. She used her scan and cut to do different kinds of flowers. And I think it's great. I mean, that is a scrap quilt. And what I'm curious, and I'm wondering if, okay, I'm going to go back to you in a second, um, Rondi. Jan, I'm curious with this scan and cut, did you go in and then highlight the fabric for the flowers like with crayon or something like that? Because I like how it kind of goes dark to the edge. I mean, what did you do there? It's fabulous. So, okay, Rondi, fused applique worked great. Thanks for the pattern. My pleasure. I love this, this, I was in a stupid quilt. I love this quilt. I love it. It's so happy. Okay, then here's Roberta. And Roberta, the picture came a little bit small, so I've blown it up as much as I can. But look at what she did in the corners. I appreciate it when I, I get what you just did. I get it. 
you cut away underneath where those blades are and you used those for the petals of the flowers. If I were a betting woman, that's what happened. Love it. Fabulous. See, this is why I, I love that we can put things up and share. If you have a hard time getting things in the form, just email it to me at um, A-L-E-X-A-N-D-R-S-N at gmail.com. We know we have a little issue going on and we're working on it as fast as we can. And I just, I just love when you share. It makes me happy. Okay, so then this is J uh, Jane's. And I, by what she said... By what she said, I believe she said she always did fuse applique, and then she got the appliquic tools, Rosa's, and was all scared to do it. And then I think I'm jumping to the conclusion you did it, and you figured it out, because the last line, she has a new tool in her tool belt. So, you know, if there's something that you're afraid of, don't run in the other direction. Embrace it. Absolutely embrace it. And in fact... Um, I'm going to be doing something that I ran in the other direction for many, many years. Our next project is going to be um, foundation paper piecing, and it's going to be the ABCs, the one, two, threes, and you'll end up with a really cool sampler when you're done with it. That's not going to start for a while, but I, I, that just seemed like a great segue to talk about that, um, to talk about that, because I know a lot of people don't want to do it. <laughs> okay, John just snuck in some things. What size circles and dots for small flower centers? Hold on. Okay, I'm going to measure this. One. This is one and a half, a one and a half inch, but you can do whatever you want. You know, you, it, this isn't anything you'll get put in jail over or anything like that. Um, what sewing machine before Bernina? Um, I had, what did I have? Okay. For high school grad, no, for eighth grade graduation, I, have an, I had a new home. And I believe that's a Janome now. Yeah, right? If I'm wrong, somebody correct me. And then I worked on, when I got into this seriously, what the heck did I work on? Because it wasn't that machine. It might have been a featherweight. I might have been on a featherweight, of which I still have the featherweight. I think we all have one of those, right? So um, here's Gail that said, I'm saving my blade cut out, hoping to find for use for them later. Love the flowers in the corner. May copy her idea. Absolutely, Gail. That's the beautiful thing about quilters is that we share. We share, we share. Okay. I realize I need a camera where I don't have one. So let's, I'm going to go like this and hope it works. Okay. How I showed you how to uh, do a finished stitch for finished applique was I took my blanket stitch and I made this really small, the bite, this longer, you could see it. It might even be better, right? There we go. It's always nice when you can see it. And I made the bite small, and then I made it longer, made the bite small, made it longer. The bite was um, about a 0 0.8, a 0.9, okay? The length was about a 3.3 .3 or something like that. Again, it's up to you. Okay, Shelly, Shelly's contention is how do you get it so that the bite is like this, and then you have a long stitch, like this, and then you have a long stitch like this. It is not the very overlock stitch, which is the third stitch on my Bernina that is a bite, one, two, three, bite, one, two, three. And the blind hem stitch is a bite, one, two, three, four, five, bite. One, two, three, four, five, bite. These get piled up, all right? And it doesn't look good on the edge. So she, but she really likes the V. Let's go back over here. 
because then you don't have the piling up of the thread for straight across. All right, what I'm gonna be sharing with you, oh, you can hear my cat, she gets lost. What I'm gonna be sharing, um, okay, what I'm gonna be sharing right now, Sparrow, kitty, 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 kitty. You know, she's so old, she, she gets lost and she wants to find me. Someone suggested she has dementia. She could, or she's deaf and blind. I don't know. She's a sweet kid. She actually slept with the kids one night, which blew my brains because she does not. She is a crabby old lady. Okay, so everybody's got their pencil and paper. Somebody got confused about what I shared the other day, and I'm thinking that um, if you were confused by that, just do the other way. <laughs> okay. What I'm going to share with you is something that I would have bet the bank against, all right? So I have prepared that, that it would work because you're going to ask your machine to do things that it, it's unnatural. <laughs> so I glued on my finished applique, um, Shelly, and I do too, and I think I suggested it, likes the Monopoly, um, Quilter Select has it, uh, I think YLI has it, whoops, mine's all goofed up, on the top. On the bottom, on the bobbin, I use my 80 weight quilter select. When we learned how to use this monopoly, we were told um, to put cotton on your bobbin, but thread has come a long way since that. So somebody had asked me, I was told to have cotton on the bobbin. No, you can use your 80 weight. That's my go-to. I say it over and over. All right. The first thing I want you to do is take off whatever foot is on your machine. Take it off, okay? Typically, I have my, you know, a 97 foot on because I piece with it, right? Take it off. Now, what we're going to do is, and I will go slow with this. I am going on my 765. A lot of you are buying this mid-range 7, and which is a great machine. Um, I'm going to press this little button right here. That's the Quilter's Playhouse. This takes me to all the stitches that the Swiss guys think we as quilters want. In the case of the 760, the 765 mid-range, the stitch is 1329. I don't know the stitches on all the other uh, Berninas, their numbers, but you want this, you want the single blanket stitch, okay? Now on my top thread, I am not gonna put the monopoly on because I want you to be able to see what we do. All right, number one, go to stitch 1329. We've done that, we can see it's highlighted. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the width, the width up here using the dial to point, or I'm sorry, point 0.8. You can see going down on the top yellow there, point 0.8. Really, it can be a point 0.8 to 1.0, but that's it. That is it, because what we're doing is unnatural. <laughs> okay. So, then the next thing I'm going to do, okay, we have the width at point 0.8. For the length, oh, hi, Shelly. Thank you. Um, Monopoly, Quilter Select. Yep, thank you, Shelly. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is, she's watching me. If I screw up, it's your chance to say it, Shelly. Um, I'm going to set the length to one. 0.7 or 2.0. So let's just, am I going there? I'm going the wrong way. I'm going to do 1.7. I'm going to do what Shelly says. Okay. There we go. So you can see it's 0 0.08. It's 1.7. Then we're going to go talk to the tension. And the tension is right up here. Right up here. Right here okay and what we're gonna do is we're gonna press that button and I'm going to take the tension down to 1.5 so let's watch this magic number go down 
1.5, all right? And because it has yellow around it, we know we have screwed around with it. And here it is, you can have yellow up here. All right, set the presser foot. It's worth it, people, it's worth it. Set the presser foot to 40. You can see it's at 50. I'm gonna take it down to 40. All right, now, Here's the kicker, and I actually had to call Jeannie Delpit because I couldn't figure out how to do this. We have to play with the balance. So on, I, and this is where with other machines, I just can't even tell you how to do it or even suggest I would even begin to know. You're gonna go to information right here. So write on your little paper information, an I and circle it. And then you're gonna wanna find balance, and it's this. The way it actually comes up on my machine, balance is hidden. So you have to scroll to find the little balance thing. And so yesterday, you can see up here, there's some hidden icons. Yesterday, I was having a panic attack because I couldn't figure out how to scroll. I mean, seriously, how hard can that be? Hit the balance. She said, don't pay attention to any of this. Don't look at the picture. Ignore it, ignore it, ignore it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go up to 20. Here we go, don't ignore it, because that it, it, will, it will throw you off. There, I'm at 20, okay? Then after you've made all these changes and you love them, you're gonna go to my favorites, which is the heart, and save them in a file. So you don't have to do this every single time. So once you get through all of this, you're A-OK. -okay. Now this is the next part that is going to blow your minds. This is gonna blow your minds. What I'm gonna do is, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this camera, for starters, try to do this so you don't get seasick, is, okay, Again, I wouldn't have believed it if I didn't see it with my own little eyes. You are going to leave. Remember I told you to take your foot off. If you don't take your foot off, what we just did, it won't let you do. But I'm going to use a single hole throw plate. Oh, yes, I am. And what I'm going to do, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on my quarter inch foot, my 97D. Okay, this is like... You're dancing, you're dancing with hot feet here, people. And because there's a D on it, I have to in, engage the dual feed. All right. And then before I go, because what if something were cuckoo, before I actually go and sew, I'm going to take a couple stitches just to make sure it fits in the hole. Yep, it does. Okay, so that's like way impressive, don't you think? Okay, so the next thing is you can um, start and stop it with a little stitch that you've fiddled with on your machine, but I'm not going to, like I showed you. Okay, see what I like about this is I'm gonna put this right in the middle, okay? Okay, here we go. Again, I'm sewing like Braille. If your machine is on hover mode, you don't have to use the knee lift. How, look how it just popped up. One of these days, I'm gonna do a Bernina, the things on my machine that I love, and I'll actually practice before so I don't make an idiot out of myself. I, I gotta tell you, Shelly, the truth of it is, I do like this more than mine. I feel like it's really easy to see what I'm doing down here and get the stitches exactly where they need to be. Again, in real life, I'd be using my monopoly. Okay. And always turn when you're outside. That's my little rule, when you're running along the outside edge. Now, this is what I want people, if you got confused by this, I want you to go back and watch it again and take notes again and go over it again. But I think the main thing 
is to always test and make sure you aren't going to break a needle or anything like that. Always test by hand with the hand wheel to make sure. Shelly actually did a quilt, and I can't remember if she had somebody else quilted or, or a documentarian look at it. And they were said, no, this is done by hand. And she said, no, this is done by machine. God, I just love this. Okay, maybe I'll take a back stitch. Then I'm going to cut it. See, that's why I want a, a, a new... A new um, 500 series. It's got all the features of the um, 700. Swing on a star. So because it's in white, it looks pretty darn funky, but you do it with that monopoly and you can see, you know, actually I've got mine from yes, from last time. John's got, hold on, John. Let me see how close. You can see how Shelly's little bite, let me, okay. Yeah, my dual feed's down. No, 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 no. I, I said I put the dual feed down. Yeah, you got to put the dual feed down if it's got a D on it. Oh, that looks pretty bad there. I'm showing you my bad work so that you can feel good about yourself. Okay, so here's, see how she's created it so the stitches aren't piling up. And then this is mine where the stitches pile up. So really... Um, the choice is yours, but I think it's a really super fabulous um, technique, and I just want to thank her for sharing it. Again, go back and watch it again and write it down. If you ask me to write out the instructions, you'll make me cry, and I'll quit. <laughs> okay. Um, your 80 weight is what? Poly or cotton? It's 100% polyester. It's a beautiful, fine thread. Our 60 weight has a uh, poly core with cotton on the outside. Are all the flowers layered with two petals? No. No. Uh, if you look right above my head, the blue one only has one layer. If you look towards this ear, that red one is one layer. I mixed them up, okay? Would you use white in the bobbin? Uh, in the case of this, yes, I would. I would because, you know, in case the, the tension gets screwed up at all, I want it to come up against the white. So I probably would, or a cream. Pretty much in my bobbin, I always have a cream, unless I'm working like with black, or then I'll get a dark gray in or something like that. Um, Yeah, sure. The non-dual feed foot will work just fine. It's just a matter of if you have a machine that has a dual feed option and you put on like the 97D for dual feed, it will go crazy if you don't engage it. So whenever you have a D on this machine, you have to engage the dual feed. And it's really easy. You just flip the thing down underneath and bring it up. So... Shelly, if you get hold of us, we'll walk you through it. Okay, Shelly, you said it. <laughs> it's really easy. Shelly, tell me, did I do an okay job? Did I represent you proudly? <laughs> um, Pauline, I have a Janome 10,000, and will that stitch work on it? I don't know. I, Pauline, you're going to have to try it and let us know because, as, as I said, I've been on a Bernina for 39, 38 years, and it's the only machine I really understand inside and out. I do have a brother in here for embroidery, and it's a beautiful machine, but I haven't tried to do this on it. Shelly, Shelly, Shelly. Well, does she knows Bernina too. You just, you just have to play with your machine and understand that when you get into these high-end machines, um, there, it's going to try and stop you from doing things. Like, for instance, when I was setting, trying to set this up yesterday to make sure, um, make to make sure it worked. I was like, "What's going on?" Oh, I had to take the foot off. Okay, I think. Christy, I would love a Bernina lesson from you. Due to the pandemic, when I bought my machine, 
My showing, sewing machine dealer did not offer lessons. I've been learning from YouTube videos, but not all of them are specific to quilting. Question, when you make these adjustments for balance, width and length and all that, and you save into your favorite, will it automatically come up with the same setting when you choose it from the favorites me menu? Yes, it's all good to go. It, it's there. It's ready to sing for you. So you just have to suffer through this one time, and, and then you're going to be absolutely fine. Uh, I use a ju Juki and it does a good narrow blanket stitch. Yeah. And, and okay. So listen, you people that have other machines, I would be really curious if it works for you and uh, you know how to get hold of me, A-L-E-X-A-N-D-R-S-N at gmail.com. Um, she loves, Sue, she loves the V stitches. She loves them because when it's the straight stitch across, it piles up. So it's a mat, honestly, it's a matter of preference. What I, I mean, that piling up doesn't bother me, but I found that using the single hole throat plate to do it was like the bomb because I, um, I almost could do it better than using the one that I typically use, the number 20 foot embroidery foot. But we've got beautiful machines. I mean, if you're here, I know you're on a beautiful machine and they're to play, they're, they are to play with, but as soon as you start doing things that you shouldn't be doing, you, you've got to be very tender hearted with it. Very, very tender hearted. Here's another one. Do you assemble the flowers first and then add them to the quilt top? What I did was I assembled the, I put the vine on first and then I assembled the two petaled flowers off of the quilt top. Then I, then I put the leaf, then I glued it all on and put the leaves on and all that. I guess I think I used Roxanne and then I just stitched, stitched its little brains out. Okay. The stitch number again on the seven, seven, the mid 700 series is one three, two, nine. I don't know what it is on the other Bernina machines. I don't know what it is. I don't think they're universal numbers. I'm not a hundred percent. Um, only if you, okay, let's see. So Shelly's saying to Pauline, only if you don't save it in your favorites. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just going to sit here for a minute and see if we have any questions. Cause what we did was pretty ambitious. Okay, to the person who didn't get the lessons, um, take a look at the sewing mystery videos to replace the classes you didn't get from your Bernina. Okay, I didn't know about those. Thanks, Sandra. What does the balance function do? I don't have a Bernina, and perhaps the balance function is called something else on my machine. Okay, Shelly, I know this is a seven-second delay, but I'm looking forward to what you have to say about this. Yes, I did stitch the vine down first, Darlene. Okay, 830, the stitch is 1329. Okay, that's the same stitch on mine. Um, Shelly's uh, webs, go to Acorn Products and get hold of her through her Acorn Products. Okay, it's 1309 on the 7, on the 570. See, that's what I thought. Uh, Connie, I think I might have missed your answer to this, but can I do this with fusible applique? No, don't don't do don't do the Shelly stitch with fusible applique. Uh, that's my opinion. It this is only for finished applique. Do your standard blanket stitch because it it will fall apart on you. It, that's my humble opinion, but I feel pretty strongly about it. What machine are you working on, Susan? Yeah, I, uh, Donna, I iron over my Monopoly. I don't worry about it. Um, what is the name of the book Shelley Tobish wrote? Okay, let me go over here because I know I have I, I got it to put up. Hold on. Um, it's precision. It's easy. Per, it's like perfect precision piecing or something like that. We do have it in the TQS store. So just, uh, baby looks bright. I know it has limitations. Thank you. Pauline says, I'm meaning, I'm meaning after saving. And when you go back to use the other stitches, Shelly, John's coming in. Easy precision 
Okay, her book is Easy Precision Piecing, and that's a whole nother jam that she does. Oh, thank you, Shelly. Okay, Shelly, how do people get hold of you, please? It's going to take a minute. Again, there's about a seven-second delay. So while she's getting that up, I think on, okay, Wednesday, Lilo's coming in, but I'll be here. And I, what I'd like to do is just talk about some different considerations. It's going to be a short one on Wednesday, but my, some different considerations of quilting. And then also uh, um, the different battings that I mostly go to, meaning fiber, fiber content and why I go to them. All right. There it is, easy precision piecing at gmail.com. That's how you get Shelly. And I want you to know that she and Bernie do uh, guild lectures online, right, Shelly? So I, I think they, I mean, they know their stuff. Also, we did a show with them that was fabulous. And so you might want to go and search um, Shelly and Bernie Tobish and watch that show. Super fabulous. No, the balance, Sandy, the balance is set to get that crazy little V. It has nothing, nothing to do with the thread on top. Oh my gosh, that's an excellent question. Excellent. Yes, they do the Acorn product. So I would really commission you today to go watch her show and um, get a hold of them because, I, I mean, I would, I would love to go to one of their lectures, that's for sure. And then speaking of shows... Yes, they do do guild presentations, and they're adorable together. They're adorable. Right now, we've got, um, it's Sarah Bond's show, and her stuff is fresh. It's wonderful. It's modern, and her story is really quite remarkable. So don't miss Sarah Bond's show. She, that was a really fun one to tape. And I will tell you, Sarah, um, Shelly just loved your story. Our producer loved everything about it. And oh, look, there's a summer sale. <laughs> I don't want to see that myself. <laughs> I don't want to see it. <laughs> so here, okay, here we go is the show. All right. It has been wonderful. Wednesday, we'll just check in. I'm hoping Lilo might even get here in time that you might be able to meet her on one of these lives. Uh, she's flying in like at 8.30 in the morning and then Robin's getting her and it's going to be a fun two days. And from my lips to God's ears, please, 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 Bill, get those built-ins here tomorrow or this is going to be a big bust. Do you have another question? Somebody said, is this the last class on this no, this is not, it's kind of the last class on this quilt in as much as I'm going to talk about uh, quilting on it, the batting I'd use. Oh, I will talk about what I'm going to do with the binding. It, it, it won't happen yet because I'm going to, I am going to have Diane quilt it. Um, I'll talk about that. And then Friday we have Connie from um, Bernina of America. And it's for all of you that have embroidery units, how you can do quilting designs using your embroidery unit. Um, and I would think that would be a pretty generic thing across the board. Or let's say you have been wondering, should you get an embroidery unit? Um, you might want to check that out. And then Mary Kay says, I have to get organized for the next week. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, hey, you guys, this has been fun. Shelly, thank you so much for being in here and having my tail side. I really appreciate it. And with that, I've got to pick up this mess. It's just getting worse and worse. And I know there's a saint you can bury for lost items. <laughs> bury the saint for the lost item. So have a good one, everyone. I so appreciate you choosing to spend your time with me.